95% alcohol. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. From intentionally gagging on cinnamon to texting while driving, drinking obscene amounts of alcohol, and experimenting with new ways to get high, like hand sanitizer, teenagers are on a tear. Adolescent rebellion is as old as time, but new research on the teen brain is getting to the root of what causes it. In a longitudinal study, researchers at the University of Vermont examined brain scans of nearly 2,000 14-year-olds who had undergone tests for impulsivity and recorded their alcohol, nicotine, and drug use. In terms of the brains, in terms of specifically what we found, we found that an area of the brain called the orbitofrontal cortex, which is near the front of the brain, right above the eyes, uh, was hypoactive. So there was less activity for those kids who had used alcohol, cigarettes, uh, or hard drugs versus those kids who hadn't used anything. In other words, certain adolescent brains may be hardwired to be more likely to use drugs or alcohol. That's not necessarily reason to worry. Teen brains are malleable for better or worse, not fully maturing until a person's in their mid-20s. I think the first thing that any parent can do is model appropriate behaviors. They can educate children very early on about the dangers of social media, about the dangers of drugs and alcohol, about sexual activity, and with education and modeling that goes a long way in teaching your kid to develop pro-social behaviors or in appropriate impulse control. The brain is only a small part of what influences a teenager's proclivity to partake. There are lots of other factors, of course, though, that contribute to the decision as to whether somebody will take drugs or not. So, for example, there are plenty of environmental factors. There's also the influence of peer groups and genetic factors and so on. So all we've really done is answered one small part of this question as to why a teenager might start taking drugs. Uh, it's probably an important part in terms of the neurobiology of why people do that. Uh, but it's certainly just one part. Experimenting is a normal part of growing up. This is not a good idea. But social media, for all its ability to spread good and bad ideas, may be presenting new challenges to the world's 1.8 billion adolescents. What you're seeing is that some of this starts out as normal teen experimentation and impulsivity and bad decisions. And then there's a contagion effect where kids will say, oh, that seems like a good idea, that seemed funny, people were getting noticed for that, so I'm going to try that, or I'm going to try to one-up it. Just do it. Just do it. Child development experts increasingly agree that teaching kids to delay gratification, instilling self-control, may be the key to navigating those stormy teenage years and life in general. With Everyday Health, I'm Stephanie Sai.